another week time for another update from the cultural arena hello and a very warm welcome to your very own show colors of india on rajya sabha tv i'm tina jha and as always let's start with the highlights first we start this week with the richness of indian classical dances followed by a cultural medley and finally you get to see rainbow on your platter understanding dance drama in india is important because it gives a great insight into the multiple dance forms that india boasts of among the most ancient manuscripts on classical dance is the natya shastra on which is based the modern adaptation of classical indian dance so here is a dance drama on a key classification from that work where love is depicted through dance take a look it's titled asht nayika literally eight heroines translating further into the eight moods of radha for krishna it's based on jaydev's 12th century masterpiece geet govind evoking the ras leela of radha and krishna enacted today by sandhavi puricha and her disciples captivating rhythms that guide scintillating dance moves and texture try here what was there in nati shastra is today also follow as it is the woman is following the same path or same situation she goes when she gets ready to go and meet the beloved one when she is separated she is into the pain and all other situations and of course the quarrel and a fight with a husband or a beloved one same is mentioned in this ashtanaika The symbolism is eternal. Each of the eight naikas or heroines is based on one aspect of the relationship that a woman shares with her beloved. Through the dance drama, the sakhi of friends serves as the link of reconciliation and unity between Radha and Krishna's separation. Sometimes pacifying Radha and others entreating Krishna. ये वो विधा है जो मंदिर मंदिरों में हुआ करती थी और देव देवताओं के लिए अष्ट सेवा के दौरान की जाती थी जिसकी परंपरा अभी भी मंदिरों में है इसको पहले पुरुष करा करते थे स्त्री प्रधान नृत्य नहीं होता था पुरुष प्रधान नृत्य होता था और इसको सुबह से लेके और शाम तक जो देव देवालय में अष्ट सेवा होती थी उसके दौरान किया जाता इसमें सात्विक भाव हैं और इसके अंदर सारा शास्त्र विद्यमान है हर पुरुष की सफलता के पीछे नारी होती है और यशोधरा यदि नहीं होती तो महात्मा बुद्ध कहाँ होते और अगर होते भी तो उनका त्याग कहाँ लोगों को पता चल पाता कहाँ वो यशोधरा को जब छोड़ के चले जाते हैं वो विलाप करती हैं और उसमें उनका मन इतना दुखी रहता है कहती हैं जल में शत जल तुल सरसते तुम घर रहते हम ना तरसते देखो दो दो मेघ बरसते मैं प्यासी की प्यासी आ भी जाओ अब आ भी जाओ ओ बनवासी ओ बनवासी क्रिटिकल टू द परफॉर्मेंस इज द रोल ऑफ द नायिका और हीरो हु कैन चेंज द नायिका स्पोर्ट्रियल एंड इमोशन थ्रू डांस 
India's scriptures have gloriously depicted the beauty of the union of the Nayak and Naika, subtly woven the gamut of feelings into an expressive fabric. The culmination is the natural union of Radha and Krishna on two planes, one being the physical and mortal, while the other extends the philosophical and divine. अगर आपने सही सीखा और सही ग्रामर आपको आ देगी सही अंग संचालन आ गया सही मुद्राओं का देखिए आप सब जुड़ रही हो उसी से अगर आपका संचालन ये है क्या के ये है दूसरा है के ये है और तीसरा है कितने हैं तो आप मुझे बताइए इन भावों को रस के हिसाब से जब तक आपके ग्राम देखिए इसमें भी मैं सोचिए लय में चल रहा तिरकट तक धाती गिर दी ना दी गिर दी नहीं बोलते आ जाओ ना तिरकट धाती गिर दी ना दी हटो ना नहीं बोलते लाइक दिस तो ये नायिकाओं का मतलब थोड़ा सा टाइम इसलिए थोड़े में मैं विवरण दे रहा हूँ तो ये जो शास्त्रीय पक्ष है जब तक आप शास्त्रीय पक्ष नहीं सीखेंगे चाहे वो संगीत हो चाहे वाद हो चाहे नृत्य हो तब तक आप कोई क्रेविटी ठीक का काम नहीं कर सकते एज मॉडल्स इट स्टैंड फॉर द लव इन सेपरेशन और वियोग एंड लव इन यूनियन और संभोग On the philosophical level it marks yearning elevation and surrender to the divine for eternal union that grace poise and a delectable aura have weaved magic down the ages Beyond dance, the Ashtanayika of the Natya Shastra is illustrated in paintings, literature, and sculpture. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed this performance. On that note, we slip into a very short break. There's much more lined up for you on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Coming up ahead on the show, a piano recital by Vivian Dosko and a vision of India through the eyes of Indian diplomats. Welcome back after the break. For most people, piano is the most quintessential instrument of the West. But here's someone who adapted it pretty well to the Indian music scene. An evening with an American pianist who while on his visit to Delhi enthralled the music buffs. Listen in. confidence poise expression vivian dosko creating magic enthralling the audiences she trained and performed and experimented on the piano for over two decades now and the complete control of its sounds tells in the performance preludes and etudes weaving a magical spell Dasko's repertoire includes works by Sergei Rachmaninoff, Frederick Chopin, Ludwig van Beethoven, Franz Liszt and many more. It's mostly romantic piano music, like 
Rachmaninoff and Chopin mostly, which are very dramatic, express, expressive composers. So I've just always been playing it as long as I can remember, so it's more strange not to play the piano than it is to play the piano. She has quite a few outstanding feathers in her cap already. Vivian received superior ratings at Pennsylvania Music Teachers Association Annual Competition and also at the National Guild of Student Musicians. She has performed at various venues at Zubilon Sound and Light, Le Petit Café, Brooklyn and is a regular performer at the French, Austrian and American embassies. There is a brilliant artist in Vivian Dosko and we are Seher, we present artists to the audience and introduce artists and audience together and create an event. So we are creating moments for the people of Delhi and this was one moment. The piano is a crucial instrument in Western classical music, jazz, film, television and most other complex Western musical genres. And Vivian Dosko has adapted her art to them all with some degree of perfection. A large number of composers are proficient pianists because the piano keyboard offers an easy means of complex melodic and harmonic interplay. and vivacity of the performance really was the winner there. Brilliant stuff indeed. Moving on now to the launch of a book that promises to open our eyes to the world of India's relation overseas. First-hand experiences and intrigues of Indian diplomats who've represented the country on a global stage. It's titled India and the World Through the Eyes of Indian Diplomats. Change the only constant, a much used adage for the current rate of globalization of the world looking beyond its own shore. I think combining and compiling of our documents groups and by 33 learned ex experts who has given a lot of his part of his, their lives to these relations in the form of this document will it's really a commendable job. For all those who want to learn international relations, or all those who have got interest, the students, the scholars, the politicians, the media personnel, and for all those, I think this uh, book will be a form of encyclopedia to give this information to them. India and the World Through the Eyes of Indian Diplomats, launched by Dr. Mahesh Sharma, is a treasured house of thoughts and ideas of Indian ambassadors overseas across the 1950s, 60s and 70s, with some key insights on offer. The 
Diplomacy is important because we don't want to have any wars. That's point number one. Point number two is that uh, diplomacy is important because we all have to work together. And basically diplomacy is the art of persuading the other. I think it's an excellent title and it's important that we in India know more about uh, how our professional diplomats look at India and the world. In fact, uh, it is not only the world, you know, it's India and the world. The man who compiled the essays by 33 Indian ambassadors is a poet and rebel at heart, Surinder Kumar. Kumar, who is a historian by education, is something of an unconventional diplomat. He plays with a straight bat and considers an ability to make friends even in hostile environments as a valuable asset for a practitioner of diplomacy. This book took me about three years to put together. Uh, you see the title, India in the World. That means it really gives an idea of how India's relations are with her neighbours, with the extended neighbourhood, with the region and the major countries and even international multilateral diplomacy, nuclear disarmament, energy security, cultural diplomacy, all those things are all in. Now, I had contacted literally 100 retired ambassadors. Out of that, we finally got 32. And now more about the man and his work by some eminent personalities who graced the occasion. It is uh, really fantastic because uh, when we talk about our civil services which has all kinds of bureaucracy, uh, many a time stories are written about the kings and the uh, rulers but nobody writes about the people who have actually made things happen and work on the issues. I can only compliment uh, Ambassador Mr. Surendra Kumar for having put this down in such beautiful words. Surendra Kumar ji is eminently, um, what shall I say, fit to do this because he is a very giving person, very outgoing, uh, very, um, he brings people together and in his tenures he has done a lot of uh, cultural diplomacy also. So I think it's wonderful read. Reflections and recollections, hard-nosed analysis and dispassionate interpretation and of course some crystal ball gazing. It's quite a collector's item too. distinctive study on international relations and contemporary history offers thought-provoking ideas, also informs students in foreign affairs as well as the general readers. With that, we slip into another very quick break. There's still more to come on the program. Do stay with us. Still ahead on the program, a colourful platter of dim sims and sushis. Welcome back once again. Time now for the culinary delight of the week. This week, let's take you to a restaurant known for its Asian delicacies. Delights from various provinces of China are a speciality here. So here is a colourful presentation from the realm of Cantonese and Japanese cuisines. The special food event is titled the Rainbow Dim Sum and Sushi Festival. The hosts Nom Nom at the Hotel Ashoka in the heart of the capital. As the name suggests, it's all about colourful dim sum and sushi, the very finest Delhi has known. There are various places to get sushi, but Nom Nom is one of the best places that you can come to. They don't even give you taste. They have phenomenally coloured sushi here, which is called the Rainbow Sushi. I've just tried it with Chef Rajan. It's been a stunning experience and it tastes really nice. Sushi delights galore for all categories of lovers, vegetarians as well as non-vegetarians. First to go, the rainbow sushi, made of tuna and salmon fish, the perfect attraction for the seafood lover. 
The primary ingredient is special vinegar sushi rice. Once it's properly layered on nori sheets, red, green and yellow capsicum with avocado and crab sticks are added to give the platter that colourful look. Wrap it with a sushi mat for that typical sushi shape. Cutting the sushi needs some precision. Finally, the rainbow sushi is served with ginger pickle, wasabi paste and some soya sauce. Normally, sushi is in every restaurant, in the normal way. So, I made a colorful rainbow sushi. I tried it two or three times. I tried it. प्लेटिंग किया, दूसरा प्लेटिंग किया, चेंज किया, ये किया, उसके बाद मेरे को लगा कि प्रॉपरली रेमबो ये सुसी बन गया, तो फिर मैंने सोचा इसको एक नेम नाम दिया जाता है रेमबो सुसी, क्योंकि कलरफुल है सेवेन कलर का Also part of the sushi platter, California rolls stuffed with vinegar rice, orange tobiko and crab stick, garnished with avocado, iceberg lettuce and served with soya gari and wasabi. The roll is quite a treat. ऑरेंज कलर है जो टोबी को है जो शीफूड है शीफूड एग है वो तो आफ्टर दिन वही सब को कट करके फिर प्लेटिंग करके हम लोग साथ करते हैं हेयर समथिंग फॉर द वेजिटेरियंस कलरफुल एस्पेरेगस रोल विद अ पिंच ऑफ इंपोर्टेड ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट सेसमी सीड्स विद अ बेस ऑफ बनाना लीफ अ कलरफुल प्लेटर इंडीड the vegetables and tropical fruits add to the texture and flavor, a visually appealing delight for those of us who prefer to eat with the eyes. First of all, we take the asparagus and wash the asparagus with a long stick and a long stick. We soak it in the marine and soak it in the marine. After that, the same process is vinegated rice and nori seed. फिर एस्प्रेगर्स जो एस्प्रेगर्स है जो सॉक किया हो उसको बेटर फ्राई करते हैं जो कि टेम्पुरा फ्लोर में टेम्पुरा बेटर में ताकि अंदर क्रिस्पी रहे फिर उसको फ्राई करके निकालने के बाद हम लोग नूरी शीट में राइस फिर लगा के फिर वो करके ये एस्प्रेगर्स अंदर स्टफिंग करके फिर ये बनाते हैं रोल बनाते हैं एंड लास्ट बट नॉट लीस्ट रेनबो कलर डिमसम्स व क्वाइट ड्रॉ टू रोटी की तरह बनाया था उन्हें पतला सा लेयर जो बनाया था पड़ी स्टाव स्टाव का तो उसके अंदर मैंने स्टॉपिंग करके उसके बाद फिर हम लोग उसको स्टीम करते हैं तो हम लोग अजय हेल्दी भी है वो और बहुत अच्छा भी स्टीम उसका ना ऑयल है उसके अंदर ना कोई फैट है ना कुछ मतलब हम लोग ने बॉईल करके उसमें से ब्रोथ पाउडर और सॉल्ट शुगर बस इसमें हम लोग ने डाल के स्टीम करके हम लोग गैस को सब करते हैं Crystal dumplings sorted with a variety of vegetables combined bright and vivid natural colors meeting eclectic taste. Under scorching heat, Nom Nom's yummy and mouth-watering dim sums and sushis serve as a reminder of the rains following soon. The most favoured pan-Asian restaurant with a rainbow dim sum and sushi festival offering a wide variety of dim sums and sushis in colourful rainbow colours is really unique and creative in itself. With camera person Dharmendra Ravleen Kaur for Rajya Sabha Television.
Well, this unique rainbow dim sum and sushi festival was indeed a colourful treat. A rainbow twist to the traditional sushi and dim sum using natural colours was a big hit. We hope you too like the festival. For more such delicacies, do tune in to our programme same time next week where we come back with more cultural updates and another culinary delight. For now, it's a wrap up on today's episode and a goodbye from the entire team. Take care.